Good morning, good morning guys. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited because today I'm sharing my pottery studio makeover as well as taking you on a studio tour. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my other makeover videos. Speaking of, I turned my son Cohen's room into the pottery studio. This is what it was before and I will have his room reveal video linked down below if you want to check it out as well. The first thing to do was unscrew this giant hanging pendant light. When I did the room reveal video a lot of you asked does that light hit you in the head and the answer is every single day so that was the first thing that needed to go so it was super easy I just unscrewed everything making sure the power was turned off first and to use my new light I actually used a pendant light that was in the room makeover from Gautier Studios as well as a pendant base that was in kitchen pendant light existing and so I just kind of combined them to make my own custom light and I love the minimal kind of Scandinavian look that it gives because you guys know that I love Scandinavian Scandinavian design and just to show you it's super easy to change your lights over and now I will not be hitting my head next was to take down the decals I was really happy because sometimes these damage the walls but luckily these specific ones just peeled right off so as much as I loved this big boy bed I'm gonna be saving it for whenever Brighton is ready to transition from a crib to a bed so the next thing to do was to just take everything down from Cohen's room including this gorgeous bed put it in storage so that we can use it for Brighton's room in the future so that we're working with a blank canvas so we can turn this what was bedroom into a beautiful pottery studio. I wanted to paint the room a color that wasn't so stark white but I still wanted it to be light and bright so I went with the color bleached linen by Bear and I did it in an eggshell color so I can still wash the wall but it's not super glossy. It's just a nice warm off-white color I'm tending to gravitate towards warmer colors where I used to always gravitate towards cooler colors in the past. I wanted to go with an off-white because I'm going to be taking some pictures of the things that I'm making in my pottery studio to eventually sell and so I wanted a blank canvas uh, so that the colors and the pieces that I'm making pop but I didn't want it to be so stark white because I wanted to bring in that huga. I wanted things to feel really cozy in here and I love this color bleached linen. I'm actually tempted whenever I'm ready to paint uh, the downstairs again. It probably will need another paint job in I don't know five or seven years um, I would do this color bleached linen it's a really really nice neutral but warm and inviting off-white a lot of you have been asking where I got the name West Cottage from for my pottery company that I'm starting and it actually is the name of where my grand used to live uh, her house is called West Cottage so um, it's in homage to my grand who I was very close with the next step is to rip up all of this carpeting. I wasn't sure how difficult it would be, but it literally just lifted off and I rolled it and I put it out for the trash the next day. Next was installing these shelving units from Ikea, super easy to install. And I think it's called the Boaxel. It's technically a bedroom uh, organization system, but it works really well for my purposes, which is to dry out my pottery. Next, I wanted to install some vinyl flooring because I need to be able to mop these floors. And for that, I went to Home Depot Canada. And I picked out this gorgeous vinyl flooring. And the best part is it's super, super easy to install. Hey there, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, question for you. Yep. What is the expertise level needed for, say there was someone like me who has no experience? <laughs> um, and a, a floor that's a subfloor. Mm -hmm. um, um, is it over presumptuous to assume I could do this myself? Uh, no, it's actually fairly easy to do. All you need is just an exacto knife and tape measure and a straight edge. Okay, yeah. so this is doable. Yes, ma'am. And the room is just a rectangular room. It's like a 12 by 14 rectangle. Yep. So I'm not doing any kind of crazy cuts, really, or just straight cuts, basically. And Pretty much. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Really? So it's doable? Yep, I can actually show you how easy it is. Okay. Uh, this is a sample here. So it's just a very fairly dull one here. Just need to score it. And that's pretty light cut as well. Yeah. Um, break it over a hard corner. Okay. 
And that's it right Holy there. Holy smokes, you're not kidding. Yeah. And just cut and then the score under the mat. Yep. Yeah. And that's all it is. Oh, wow. And just click it together to the next row. There it is. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, and it does it need to be glued down or anything? No, not no. for these one because it does come with the underpad. Because it's got the tongue and groove in the yeah. underpad. Okay, cool. Thank you. So this is me installing the hardwood. I actually was just doing some test patches because you can see I'm running it horizontally instead of vertically, but it really is just as easy as the gentleman in the store told me it was. I am so happy with how this flooring turned out. I had never laid any kind of flooring before. I was intimidated, but I also was having feeling a little bit of chutzpah and I'm glad that I gave it a go. I did scratch my wrists on one of my cuttings, but overall it was super duper easy. So here is another shot of what the before looked like. Next I'm going to reveal the after and then take you on a little studio tour. Here I have some hand pressed letters. This is so I can press words onto pieces that I'm making. I have some MDF bats. So this is for if you're throwing pottery, you can throw it on top of a bat as opposed to just straight on the wheel um, and it's easier to transport your pieces. So I try and keep my studio really minimal and just have what I absolutely need. These are all colors that I love. I shared it in a recent vlog for my members. I have a towel, a microfiber towel, because things do get messy in a studio, as well as a pure canvas uh, blanket because you want to dry your pottery slowly. Speaking of which, I have some plastic pieces here because again, you want pottery to dry out slowly so that it's drying evenly. This uh, are some pieces that are bone dry that are ready to be painted and then get their first bisque fire. My boys have been working on some air hardening clay, so these are some of their creations that I just think are super cute. So this is the shelf of all of my drying pieces. You'll see that I have them drying under some canvas with plastic on top. Again, this is to absorb any moisture, but have the pieces dry out slowly, because again, you want even dry slowing uh, process with pottery. So I'm partly why pottery is quite expensive, uh, generally speaking, to purchase. A, it's handmade and it takes a while to throw on the wheel, but then pieces have to dry out for several weeks before you're painting them, and then you do your first firing, which is called your bisque firing, and then you're going to glaze it, let the glaze dry, and then you're going to do your second firing, sometimes even a third firing depending on what you're doing. So, you know, it's it, the time involved with ceramics that give it a little bit of a higher price point, but I love that all of these pieces are one of a kind, handmade, and that you know that um, they're all made with, you know, slow living and intentional living at the core of all the pieces, and everything I do, I want it to be functional, but also beautiful. This mug y'all went crazy for over on my Instagram, so I'll have to make sure that I make more of these mugs when they're ready to sell. I also wanted to make sure that all of my mugs feel really good in the hand, like this Speak Moistly to Me mug. All my Canadian peeps will appreciate that humor, but the mug also just feels really good in the hand, which is super important to me. My logo that I designed, uh, this is a tea bag rest and it says kappa on the inside so I'm going to be making a couple of those to sell. This is a new piece that I haven't shown on Instagram yet. You guys are getting the first look but I don't know. I just kind of love the cheeky sayings on something that looks, you know, really fancy. Here is my drying rack. I've got a couple of ribs and sponges and stuff. So generally things are either drying from me washing them or I'm using them. So I just kind of keep them on the drying rack here. 
I've got an assistant, <laughs> and then I've got my wedging board as well as my wooden board for when I'm hand sculpting pieces. It's really important to wedge your clay before you throw it. And then in this corner, I actually have my watercolor station. So I have this beautiful art easel that was in my dad's office. It's a drafting table, an antique one, but it works perfectly for painting. And so I've got some of my watercolor paper back there. And I love being able to look out the window while I'm painting. It's just really tranquil and peaceful. You'll see too that I like to keep my paintbrushes minimal as well. I make sure that I use all the ones that I have and I only have what I use. So over here is my pottery wheel. I went with the Shimpo Whisper and it's a nice powerful machine but it's very quiet and so it's perfect for my purposes. So that's what the wheel head looks like. And then I've got this little station here where I've got my water and these are the tools that I use the most often. This actually was my grands and so it's really special to incorporate that texture into some pieces. And then I've got a pear trimming tool and some other trimming tools as well as a needle. So these are tools that I use every single time that I'm throwing. And then to the right of my wheel I have my slot bucket so I can use this as slip if I'm connecting pieces but it's also where I recycle my clay. I always have a towel hanging over the back because again throwing pottery is quite messy which brings me to these beautiful vinyl flooring. Guys I can't believe I installed that. I'm so proud of myself. I love the color. I love the texture. I love how high end it looks. Super affordable. Super durable. Um, again they're from the Home Depot Canada. I wish my entire house was this flooring guys. I love it that much. I really wish I could do my whole house in this flooring especially with how easy it was to install. That is it for my studio tour. I'm so excited to get West Cottage up and running and start selling pieces. I'm also thinking of starting a West Cottage YouTube channel where it's just kind of calming videos with tranquil music of me building things in clay, maybe some tutorials, but really just a place of pure escapism where you can just relax, and watch something be built and kind of have the ASMR of the clay. Um, I put it in a vlog and a lot of the members of my vlog uh, section of my channel said that they were really surprised at how calming and enjoyable it was to watch. So let me know if that's something that you guys would want to see. Let me know what you think of my official studio, guys. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed already. I have a really exciting room transformation, living room transformation coming up. It's my first transformation in a house that is not mine. So you guys wanna make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that video. Make sure you're following my ceramics account on Instagram. I'm at West Cottage and my regular Instagram is at l.linquist. I hope you guys are having a great day. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch today's video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.